Everybody, welcome once again to Y'all Gaming. After a long break, we're finally back. We were busy. We were traveling a bunch. More you, actually. You were traveling a whole lot. Yeah, I'm still tired. Uh, I'm, yeah. This is my first week off after uh, traveling for eight weeks straight. Jeez. Uh, doing between, um, between, you know, Smash and Brawlhalla. And if I had got picked up for Evo, I actually wouldn't have had a break, and it would have been 10 weeks straight because it would have been Evo into SmashCon. But I didn't do Evo this year. Uh, Smash wasn't there. They already figured out all their stuff for multiverses, and uh, I'm not high up enough on the Tekken uh, commentary list to like get hired for just that. So I'm like good for like a fail commentator if I'm doing other things there. But like, yeah, you sure, can't sure. just hire me straight up for that game. So, but eventually I will get there. But anyway, yeah. it's good to be home. So I, you know, I I'm glad to I'm glad to actually have some time to do some stuff on my computer. I did buy. For y'all who uh, did maybe pop into the stream when I was out, I did buy a new laptop uh, to stream from the road and play games from the road. So that's good. But it, my computer is still obviously way better than my laptop. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we're finally back here now. And unfortunately, we won't be at Evo, but maybe we'll be able to watch it. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, but yeah. thanks for tuning in. Um, we're, today, we're talking about a couple things. First off is multiverses, which is the thing I could talk about. I don't know about these other two things, Xenoblade 3 and Monster Hunter. But multiverses, I've been playing the crap out of, as have you. Uh, it's good. I'm shocked yeah. and surprised and happy that it's good. We haven't talked about it much on here at all, because I think last show that we had was before the beta actually came out. But, like, I'm kind of addicted. I can't stop playing it. <laughs> yeah, no, the game actually is pretty insane and it's wild too because yeah i wasn't expecting for me to be like that into it because you know I, when i first started playing i had a couple of complaints and i still think they're there but i think they're not as bad as i originally thought because right. obviously the game is uh balanced for doubles and i think you know doing something in, uh doing safe aerial dash back doesn't work nearly as well as in doubles if sometimes you're surrounded right right so yeah, yeah you can't do that as well in, in doubles but in singles that definitely is a huge problem but um you know, seeing that most things will probably be done in a doubles format, you just kind of got to get used to that. Um, but yeah, the game is, is great. Like, I, you know, you turn it on. It's one of those games where, like, it's a one more, you know, it's a one more game, but then you play five more games. Like, that's what type of You game can't stop. Play. Yeah. That keeps happening to me. I'll start playing late at night, and I'll be like, all right, let me get one more set in. And then they don't run the set, they leave, and I'm like, ah, I can't. I got to run a full set. <laughs> I gotta run a full set. I can't just do that. And then nobody runs a set and I'm up for two hours. Um, yeah. My biggest know, which issue... Which is weird. Yeah. Because I feel like there's no... There's no, like, rank full... Like, actual rank yet. Right. People are really treating that rank like... Or treating it like that. So, you know, if they lose, they're like, I'm losing my Evo. You yeah. know? Like, <laughs> my points. So, I'm like, all right, buddy. I think once you get to a certain MMR, like, once you get high enough, people really start... Because, like... I'm I'm top 100 in ones and twos, and now at this point, like losing means a lot. Cause you'll okay. like, if you win, you get no rank. But if you lose, you'll drop like 300, and it's like, oh my god. So like, yeah. I kind of get it, but at the same time, who cares, right? Like, all right. your the only reason you would do that is to flex on people. Although now, uh, in in our group chat, somebody linked us. There's a tracker site, tracker.gg, where you can see somebody's stats. It's like OPGG, but <laughs> what the yeah isn't that crazy yeah oh, yeah i did not know that That's, so now people okay. will be looking you up in between games like <laughs> that's scary. like it's not gonna the, i needed to be like super thorough though like this guy throws out a lot of jab like <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> so he is like, the dodge this guy is always in the air like okay all yeah. right yeah it's uh oh damn it my rank dropped on here i'm 139 and 191 um but yeah what i it's mad fun. The game is I got tweeted out by uh, mo Event Hubs. All right. Did you? Sick. Yeah, two hours ago, TK Breezy gets inspired to make his own one-on-one -on -one TV2 uh, multiverse tier list after seeing ranks from other players. Ooh. That's neat. Oh, snap. That's nice. Oh, okay. this is cool. Thanks, Event Hubs. Uh, all right, anyway. Yeah, no. <clears throat> yeah, I think the game is pretty sick. I think um, I do like seeing how much, like, how many like static teams I kind of sing right now? Sure. Because again, like we don't get to get that a lot, right? Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, especially in Smash, because like I mean, we had you know we had Smash uh, static teams that like you would know of, um, like pretty frequently, like Devoid and the Cat, like right at the beginning of this game, they were always yeah, of course. Teaming, right. 
you know, obviously SFAT and, and QPU back in the melee days, but like just there really isn't like a crazy amount of good static teams that you see all all the time. When I think of them now, I can only really think of those twins from uh from uh Canada, like oh, those uh Linus and Lucy. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. I don't know if they're actually from Canada. They might actually just be from the Midwest, I think but that's why I saw them in Gommel. Yeah, yeah. I was like, those guys. That's like obviously that's a stat, but they've been static teams since the womb. So you know what I mean? Like that's right. just. They share what the they same do. brain, like it's the, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, but like yeah, it's just like it's nice to see someone actually, you know, or this game actually kind of force people to want to play more teams, so, right? Yeah, I mean, I like you were saying. I feel like one v one in the game. I played it a lot to start, just so I could like. I think one v one is really good to learn the game, so it's not chaos and like you can learn move sets, you can learn how the game like flows, the function of it, blah blah blah. Um, but. It kind of sucks at a certain point. 1v1s just become spamming your safe aerial into dodge. Um, mm -hmm. And the dodge, there's supposed to be a thing where if you dodge a certain amount, it stops being invulnerable. Uh, the problem is that that number is way too high. Like, yeah. it's it's way too high, and it takes way too long for that to happen. Um, yeah, the dodge mechanic needs to be like, I think it should be like three dodges. Right. <laughs> like, I it needs to eat like a ton of your bar or so because and i know that people are like they do that because uh i think that's almost all almost exclusively balanced around superman because superman's whole thing is like oh you know uh to get better movement you have to cancel or dodge out of armor moves and stuff like that so you're Definitely. using like twice as much you know uh dodge meter as like a normal person and i'm like that's fair and but i think that you could like kind of make that case for superman that like maybe his takes like five instead of three sure. because so he can actually use his dodge stuff but i think just because of the fact that like you can do like it's it's kind of brainless neutral like you should have to think about actually dodging back uh instead of just kind of throwing it out because people like there's other times where you know like a, a bugs would do that charge up like you know i was a side air kick. Like the kick yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then dodge back but like no one's around them and i feel like if you're dodging for no reason you should definitely get punished for that right uh but you know with again how small the meter is like it, it doesn't yeah, it doesn't do that. There's just nothing bad that happens to you when you when you screw up, unfortunately. So yeah. it's just like I don't know. It's frustrating, but uh I, I'm I, I hope that they sort of change that. I, I also I was in Mirror Man stream. Mirror Man's like the number one one V one player and he said the same thing where it's like the meter feels almost worthless. It should be like three or four dodges, but if you hit somebody it refreshes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can't yeah. just keep throwing out safe aerial dodge like i i fought shaggies who i i think the problem is it, it really enforces like one note play styles where you just dodge into your aerial and then that's your that's all you do and then because if it works the payoff is huge but if it doesn't um i don't know the game's a great start though it's only a beta i hope that people take to the 2v2 format because i'm also worried about that that like that's never going to take off um but hopefully, you know, over time, more people get into it. Like you said, statics might be interesting for people to follow. I think it's more interesting in terms of, like, storylines than 1v1s. But we'll see how it shapes out. I'm I'm optimistic. Yeah, I think I think that's, uh, you know, I, I think I think everything that you said about that, that is definitely um, facts. Because, like, I, I, I like to I like having some level of, like, neutral that's very quick, mm -hmm. but some the quick neutral turning into safe neutral is not the the greatest and that thing that you said about like it should refresh when you get hit is what i meant when i said like brawlhalla had it right with like the way that they do dodging because back in brawlhalla like you used to uh everything used to be like dodging used to be so super free and then like sure you could um you could like dodge after everything so it was like really hard to get like true combos and stuff sure now your dodges are like i think a three like a three a second cooldown so like if you get if you get hit with a combo and then you get red on that combo like that you get red and you get to eat you have to eat all that damage and stuff which is like really cool. Also, if you hit somebody, you get a different dodge called a chase dodge, which means like you can use that. It's basically like a movement dodge. Okay. Uh, and like I would like that a lot too. Like if you could refresh if your dodge is refreshed after getting a hit, so that way defensive play isn't like. Or I guess the super safe thing. play isn't at yeah as the the best thing that you can do like where I'm just I keep spamming this move until it finally hits sure sure but if it doesn't hit I dodge back but like by the third time you do that if you don't like actually hit something now you're like gonna get blown up because you can't dodge right. so I thought that was pretty cool 
but I don't know exactly how to super implement that because yeah, there is a different there is different mechanics in the game, and I think with Superman being the way that he is. I think dodge nerfs would directly nerf Superman, so they have to figure out the way around that. Definitely, yeah. I mean, Superman yeah. is all over the place right now. He's, like, all over the top 30. He's the new hotness uh, for everybody. So it's kind of interesting. I'm interested to see how the game keeps developing. It's a very fun game, but, yeah, it definitely needs some, some adjustments. But I know we're getting yeah. new characters soon, so we'll see oh, how yeah. those shake things up a little bit. I got to make a 2v2 tier list. I've only made a 1v1, but... I assume it's the same as everybody else, where Velma is top. <laughs> but yeah, I, but I mean, there's definitely a little shakeup in there. Yeah, so a little. Yeah, bit. I put I, I put most yeah. of the assassins like a, not a little further down. I gave them their own tier of being like, I'm not helping you, you're helping me, right? Because like right. a lot of the assassins don't have like big team play stuff. Um, like you know they're not giving you shields or anything. You know, obviously, uh. Arya gives you like critical hit and stuff, or, but I think that's mostly for her. Like she, like she wants right. you to kind of like. All right, I gave you it, but like if you hit it, then like, you know, pass the ball to me. It's basically. incidental if you. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's there's definitely as you said, yeah, there's there's some there's some things that need to be done in that game, but it's you know it's still relatively early, and they have a lot of things they can't do without changing the core of the game. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Hopefully they'll uh, keep shaking it up in the right direction. Evo is this weekend, so I'm interested to see how things turn out there. But uh, on next on the docket we have, I believe, is it is it Xenoblade or is it Monster Hunter? I think it's Xenoblade, right? Uh, it's Xenoblade. Well, we could do either or, but I, yeah, I'll just I'll talk about it quick. I Xenoblade have heard this is, is the best Xenoblade so far. Which I am I am only like six hours into it, and okay. I can probably agree. Really. Uh, yeah, well, I'm a, I'm an X fan, so uh, X okay. is different than the other, and it's not actually it's not canon, and it's not part of the universe, the Xenoblade one and two universe at all. Okay. So, uh, but it also was different because you didn't have like it was there wasn't a story where you were following a main character, you you're you're a created character, so you're following okay. you essentially in this story. But I think the gameplay of that game was fantastic, and uh, probably the best gameplay of any Xenoblade. But if we're talking about Xenoblades with the ones that all go together. Yeah, that one, I'm only six hours in, and I'm already having more fun than I had with uh, <laughs> you. Uh, what sucks, because I was, like, super, ha uh, I was super, like, excited to play two, because I didn't play the first Xenoblade. I was like, whatever, you know, like, choke, loser, LOL. Sure. And then, uh, you know, it came out on these things, so I read the story, and I watched some people play it, and it, and it actually does seem like a pretty cool game. Um but I wouldn't go back to play it because it's just, you know, time has passed, right? Yeah. So when 2 came out, because I already played X, I was like, all right, yeah, I'll play 2. 2 originally, I think, was pretty cool. But then there were certain aspects of it that I didn't like. The gotcha aspect is very annoying of, like, trying to find new blades. Um, the beginning of the game is really... But that's just Xenoblades in general. The beginning of all Xenoblade games are slow because the way that they work is that, like, you... There's like a billion tutorials, right, too? Well, it's not even that. It's just like the the way that the game works. You position your character, and they just like auto attack, right? And sure. like that's and that's just going on. Now the auto attacks aren't like <laughs> as the game goes on. That's not your main source of damage. It's actually your arts. But at the beginning of the game, because you only have like three arts and like no nothing to like make it so that they build up fast or anything, mm -hmm. you there's a lot of downtime before you press a button. So gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and it's that it's not you know like the beginning of the game is very boring, but that's just kind of what what you expect. To, to get, and I, I think Rose Buddy, yeah, MMO hot bar con, uh, combat makes sense because you have your auto attacks. You're not like they're auto attacks, and you don't have to click anything for it. It's just if you're standing next to an enemy, they will do their attack animation. And then when your cooldowns are up, you use those, and they have like stats. Some of them are just like, I think the coolest thing about the arts though is like they all have like better ways to do damage. So like obviously backslash, you hit them in the back. Uh, sure, yeah. You have moves that are like you you have to hit them in the right area so like if you hit someone in the face with this move it's like it's like front blow back or whatever that means that like you'll knock them back but only if you hit them while you're facing like while you're both facing each other and i was like all right that's a pretty cool way to make you as the player actually have to still move your character around yeah that's pretty otherwise cool. you could just stand in one area and spam all your shit when it comes off cooldown um the but Kingdom yeah Hearts the beginning of the game yeah. can be a little boring as you start getting shit, you can, it, it opens up. And I think that's like almost all our MMOs, right? Like the beginning, you get like one spell and it's like, okay, word. And then like by the end, you're, you know, getting all these combo spells. And it's like, word, this is what we waited for. It just, I think the thing about it is how long does it take to get to that point? Sure. 
Like, yeah. how long are you gonna are you gonna sit around playing the game before the game? And how many uh, how many tutorials are you willing to sit through? And like, I don't know. I feel like these things always take so long. You know what I mean? Like these games, like uh, JRPGs are already kind of long, but to introduce all these different mm -hmm. systems and stuff just makes it even less. I don't know, appealing for me personally. But yeah, I think I beat. I I beat. I know that I beat. Uh... Xenoblade Chronicles X in like 80 hours. Uh, and that was a bunch of 12-hour streams. I don't remember how much time I have in 2, and I could go and look, but it's... I think I have to reinstall it, so I'm just probably not going to do that. To, sure. uh, yeah. So, Perk says, RPGs seem so hard to actually stick with. They do, especially in this current a day and age, because like every week, another like long or good game is going to come out. So you just don't like have that time to develop. Especially like... This, like it's this is my job to play games right sure and i still like You're don't still have the time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah still don't, don't have the time so for someone who has like a regular job i can see how like if you aren't the type to be like okay i'm gonna play this game for like two months straight and i'm gonna play like three hours a day or something like that and then i'll beat it then yeah most of more than not you might drop it but a lot of people who are going to end up beating this games either like took a long weekend to just play this game like like two or three weekends in a row or they're like literally uh like little by little whittling it down until they get to the uh to right. the end so yeah there's just so many games coming out now like i i'm i was in the middle of neon white and i really liked it and then i just stopped playing it because a bunch of other stuff came out i beat all of arkham knight for some reason i got back into that i started playing star wars squadrons like i'm constantly picking up games and i feel like getting into a jrpg is just like you gotta really commit because yeah. it lasts so long. So, Speaking of yeah, games that last long, uh, yeah, I was going to talk about Monster Hunter because you're still on yeah. that, right? Well, yeah, I was going to talk about that. I was doing the same thing with picking up games again because, like, you know, I put I put Dead Cells down for a while. Sure. And then when I got back into it, I was like, oh, like, I didn't realize. Death, all right, so to beat Dead Cells, you actually have to beat it five times on different difficulties. Yuck. Um, yeah, well, like to beat it for like, like you can just beat it once and then be like, okay, I beat it, like I'm good, and you can continue to play on that on that difficulty or whatever. But every time you beat it on the highest difficulty you can beat it, you get another cell, and the cells make the game higher, uh, harder. So like, I'm I'm currently on a two cell run, and I am ha I am struggling. So sure. I, yeah. I, I am struggling, but like it's it's a it's a it's a roguelike, and there's definitely things like there's this thing called legendary forge that makes it so that every weapon that you find that you pick up is stronger originally without you having to do like to upgrade it or modify it or whatever so like i think i'm at the point where i just have to do runs to grind that uh oh, that sucks. the legendary forge up yeah and that sucks i like, if i was better i probably could still beat it but it is it is just like i'm not that it feels like a waste game. of time yeah. yeah 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 so but like it's still fun and like it's great for me to play on the plane so like that's why i've been playing it sure um and but again, like that's what I'm saying. That's a game that came out literal year, like just long as hell ago, and I'm still playing that. Plus every new game that's came out, like it's hard to find time to play these games. But I have uh, successfully found time to uh, play that and Monster Hunter Sunbreak. And the reason why I like Monster Hunter Sunbreak mm. so much is because it continues to keep opening up. Like it was like a forty dollar expansion, and it's definitely worth all forty of those dollars. Damn, that's so. pretty big. Forty bucks yeah. is like a huge. Usually DLC like is like game, 10, dude. 15. Yeah, it sounds like a whole new thing. Yeah, it's another game. Because I, I, I put... Uh, I have 159 hours on the Switch. And then obviously, I don't play the Switch anymore. I now yeah. currently have 130 hours on to um, the PC. And that's with me like speed running through the first part so I can be ready for Sunbreak. And now that I'm in Sunbreak, there's, like, there's different armors. There's uh, harder monster fights. There's evolved forms of some of your favorite monsters. And, like, uh, there's different quests. There's this quest line now where, like, you hunt with NPCs that are, like, in Elgato. And, like, it originally it doesn't sound fun, but it actually is fun uh, because they'll, like, it's cool to see how they interact when certain stuff happens. Like, if you put a monster to sleep, they'll put down bombs, sleep bomb the uh, target. And it's like, all right, word. So it's kind of like you're doing hunts online, except you don't have to go online. Um, sure. Yeah, there's a it's it's a good game, and I feel like it, it, I I would never try to talk you into it, but if you ever like <laughs> somehow saw something in that game that was like, oh, it makes me makes me want to try it, I'd be like, good, because I feel like it, it's a you know 
it's up there. I just don't know if it's your type of game, but it's definitely once you get caught by the Monster Hunter bug, you're you're definitely caught. Yeah, that that's my main fear is like actually enjoying it because the game is like yeah. mad grindy, right? It just takes forever to. I don't know. Yeah. I, the idea of having to do multiple hunts to like get one thing, you know what I mean? That well, sounds exhausting. It, you have to do like you have to do those hunts anyway to like advance the story. So often, oftentimes, okay. especially if you're only going to play like one, if you're only going to play like one weapon, sure, and you don't really care about doing like the crazy like oh I'm gonna make like several versions of this weapon like you could definitely get through on that game by, by getting one good like raw damage weapon and just doubling down on that like just getting it as strong as possible without sure. thinking about elements without thinking about pro uh, procs and stuff like that. Um, so like if you so, main one thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you main one thing, you can definitely make that happen. I main switch axe, but I have several switch axe builds. But the thing is, I didn't have to do any too many extra hunts. Because I do everything anyway, so I most likely already have the material, you know. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I feel like the the grind isn't as bad as you may think. You know, you more often than not, if you're just kind of running through the game and you need to make a certain armor piece, you probably have it because you, you know, you've hunted a uh, Kuliyaku seven times already because he was showing up, or uh, Antonath a couple times because he was there. And then it's like, oh, okay, I need this Antonath thing. And then you go there and you're like, oh, I have all the materials. Move on, right? Sure. Um, yeah. I, I, there probably is. A, I think the only time you really have to grind is for decorations, um, which are like little slot. They're little gems that you put into your armor to give them like an extra point in whatever like armor skill you need. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some of the materials that you need for those are kind of locked in behind some pretty hard monster fights. Gotcha. So I feel like yeah, you definitely have to grind for that. But like the thing is, once you finish that, you don't have to do that anymore. Like if you get if you need pierce up. Pierce up only goes three. So if you have three gems, that means you never have to look for any more gems again. Or you may not even have to do that if you can find it in your armor or whatever, right? Sure. So, okay. yeah, it's, it's a fun game. It's a wonderful game. I think that if you uh, have been sitting on the sidelines for Monster Hunter for other reasons of, as, as like, you thought it was uh, boring or, like, tedious, well, they're taking out a lot of the tedious stuff, um, such as uh, back in the older Monster Hunters, you had to remake pickaxes you had to make whetstones and the pickaxes were to to harvest uh coal like you know like stones or stuff stones yeah. that you need to use to and then the the whetstones to sharpen your weapon and like so if you like ran out of whetstones in the middle of a hunt you were just <laughs> like you're done you're just yeah you're just you're just done like and it's like okay well this is this is annoying but you don't have to do that anymore you have it in a limited webstone you have a limited pickaxe you have a limited fishing rod and all that other good stuff um and that's good and so now the game is really just about like slapping monsters, and sure. that's pretty fun. Yeah, as long as it like is still the combat, because that's like why most people play it, right? It's just like the combat's super good. So I can see that it keeping interest on people. But yeah, I, yeah. I I just I know that they make a new one every like year or two. So I keep saying I'm gonna wait for the next one, and then the next one comes out, and I'm like, ah, uh, no, I'll wait for the next one, and I keep doing that. So. Maybe the one after, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it was it was World into Rise. World came out in two thousand four. Uh, surprising. Two thousand four. Uh, wait, no, 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 I'm tripping, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. That was the series. Was oh, crazy. I was gonna say uh, that's crazy because I saw World yeah. and I was like, oh, World sounds good, and then Rise came out and I was like, oh, that sounds good because one of them was for the Switch. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was Rise. So right. Monster Hunter World came out in two thousand eighteen. Monster Hunter War, uh, World Iceborne, the expansion, came out like the end of 2019. And then That's what it Monster Hunter Rise came out in 2021. Okay. And now it's 2022. So, yeah, I mean, you may, you know, we might hear some Monster Hunter news uh, once they stop giving this uh, one title updates. Get another well, Monster Hunter. Everyone's talking about World 2, which that would be cool. But I'm, like, interested to know the, there's a big thing that they did. Uh, there are big change in this one that they did in comparison to World is uh, mm -hmm. the wire bugs. So you have like way better movement in Rise, and you have extra attacks because of the wire bugs. And I don't know how you how you go back from that, right? Because World didn't have that. So like, are they gonna just bring? Is wire bugs a mainstay now, or like? Got you. Yeah. 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 So I mean, and I don't think the game will get worse per se. I, I think it just depends. Like, may, if I couldn't use wire bugs to move, but I still had extra moves for whatever they decide to do with that, then like, cool. But I am very interested to know how they're going to go, where they go from this, like iteration of like having these like great movement options in this game that originally didn't have that gotcha okay yeah yeah i feel like when you introduce a uh a mechanic like that that's so core to the game it's like how do you remove that it's 
Yeah, that's that's a weird yeah. question. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm looking well, at well, other I mean, games. Smash did it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's like air wave dashing. That's dead. Get out of here. What's weird to me is like I can't go back to play Smash now. I think because I'm used to charging aerials and multiverses now. I don't know how people jump games. Like that's crazy to me. The fact that people could like drop a game and then play something else. Because, good lord, I can only do one yeah. thing at a time. It's crazy. Um, yeah. I'm looking at other games coming out in August, and honestly, it looks pretty good. I mean, Rumbleverse is coming out Ooh. on the 11th, which is something that I know you've played. I haven't tried it out yet. You'll like it, bro. I can't wait until you. I'm sure like, I'll I've, like it. I'm sure I'll. This like is like the most like this is the most Coney stamp of approval game. It looks like it. That yeah, that I was like, I know that like I will if I tell you this, there's no way in hell that you will uh, dislike it unless you're just trying to be a contrarian to me. Like that's it. Like I, I think I'd like it. I'll give it a shot. I'm gonna play it soon. Rumble versus uh ro or Rumble verse. God, the word verse is killing me. Roller Drome, which is a game that I saw that I thought looked really cool. Uh, which is the the skating one. There's the Pac-Man World remake, which I am actually excited for. I don't know why. Uh, I think it's forty dollars, and I'm still gonna be buying it. Um, God, there's a lot of remakes. There's like the Ninja Turtles remakes, Destroy All Humans two remake, Last of Us one remake, Spider-Man remastered. Jesus Christ, dude. It's yeah, it's all there's just a lot. Remakes. God. It, well, yeah, and I. That, I'm I'm a vet, I'm a big remake hater too because I feel like you know once well, when Nintendo was doing the like let's make Ocarina of Time want everything ever again, um, and then everyone was like yo I was, shut up like <laughs> stop letting them do this okay we played the game you can you can emulate it for 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 less and then on top of that just it's come on like no I, I need a new Zelda game so I the, the me and me remakes I'm surprised they even tried to do that with with uh. Skyward Sword because I thought people didn't like that game that much. That's but, what I heard. Is that it? That's yeah. like the least liked or the most hated Zelda game. But that's all I, I saw. People were like, "Yo, it's back!" Is like, huh? <laughs> people wanted yeah. this. It was yeah. It it was not. It wasn't for me. I felt like there the my issue with Skyward Sword wasn't actually that it was a bad game. They the they tutorialized the beginning too much. Sure. Like so, I feel like it. There was like things that I obviously already knew about the Zelda universe that I had to replay through because oh you know we have to teach you all these things and I was like bro, like the first like three or four hours, everything you do was like this is how you do this and then it's like a pause and it's like you can't really skip the cutscenes. Ah uh, sure it, yeah. It was making me like okay this game is very slow but after I finally started getting movement and being able to do things it was pretty fun. Um, I still think it's probably one of the you know worst Zeldas uh, Zeldas out there. Uh, and Zelda's like it's hard to say like worse and mean that in a bad way because it was still like a good game. Sure, but even the worst. I, if you were to ask me to go than, back and play yeah. it, yeah, I'd be like, no, I'm good. Got you. Yeah, I feel like uh, there's only I played Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask and like they were mostly okay. I played that new Link's Awakening or whatever it was, the one on the Switch. I really liked that. That was good. Uh, but I have zero interest in playing like I don't know. I feel like Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess and games of that ilk are like products of their time um they feel very like skyward sword feels very tied to the whole motion controls thing because that was like the emergence mm -hmm. of that um mm -hmm. whether or not that's true i don't know but I've, I've i hear that those games don't really have much like in terms of things to keep you coming back right so well, i mean scott twilight princess was insane I, that's my favorite zelda but mm -hmm. uh i also played on the gamecube because i yeah i didn't want to do all the motion control stuff at the time oh uh, i forgot that was on gamecube and Wii. Yeah, yeah, they, wow. they double tapped it, which was really what's a good idea because yeah, I had a way better time playing regular Zelda than motion control Zelda. So sure, sure, yeah, I forgot about those. Okay, all right, guys. Uh, so that's gonna do it for this episode. I think we talked about our gaming, and now we want to hear from you guys. Go ahead and tweet at us. Let us know what you guys have been playing and what you've been gaming on. And uh, if you're listening to this, check it out on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. This is on everything. I think uh, we're all over the place. So. Um, I'm trying to think of what I'm playing next. Uh, I don't even know what games are on the dock. Obviously, I'm playing Roller Drone soon. Uh, okay. when that drops, but I think that's it. I I don't really have much. Like, maybe I'll finish Neon White because I did like it. I'll just keep playing Multiverse is probably forever. <laughs> yeah, you I know love this game. that. Yeah, so you know, but 
that's what actually what I'm about to do after this. So you guys trying to come hang out and watch the multiverse gameplay for a little bit, then come over to the TK Breezy stream as I'm about to go live in like literally 20 seconds. There you go. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, man, I'll see you guys later. If you ever want to play some dubs or if you get done with whatever you got to do, just hit me up. True, true. I'll be uh, I'm doing a couple things tonight because I got to film some stuff. Uh, and since I'm gonna be gone for an event in oh, mid now. of August, also SmashCon, but in the middle of uh. Where am I going in middle? Oh, I'm on vacation. Never mind. That's what I'm doing. I was like, what are you talking? I, was like I have the I have the calendar. It's like unless you're going to shine. No, unless no. you mean like the twentieth. I got confused. No, I'm going on vacation third week of August, so I gotta record some stuff. Sure. But I might be down to play later. Okay. Cool, cool. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, y'all. Gaming. We'll see you next time. Bye.